This is what the third trailer should have been. I know that's probably an abrupt way to start this video, but that's honestly my entire opinion summed up right then and there. Um, after the very first trailer came out, I was pretty damn interested in what the film was going to be about. It didn't show much action, but it did show us what the overall themes of the movie were going to be. And, you know, gave us our first glimpse of Batman in action, showed us what the film was stylistically was going to be like, that it was going to look more like Watchmen and not, uh, you know, Man of Steel, which was uh, Zack Snyder trying to do a riff on Nolan, and that didn't really work out. I think this is more of his forte. And then the Comic-Con trailer came out, and that is easily my favorite comic book movie trailer of all time, probably one of the best trailers I've ever seen, because it set a very high bar for the film to follow and for all the preceding trailers to follow it showed us that we could potentially get a film with Zack Snyder visuals and fight scenes with the Dark Knight level writing and themes and that kind of stuff and when you just think about that just think about the implications of getting two things like that combined that actually mesh well together and actually manage to work together really well to make an overall amazing product like that would be one of the best comic book movies of all time but unfortunately the third trailer really sunk a lot of my excitement for it um it, it, it it's it made the movie seem a lot more stupid than uh, what we thought it was going to be. And, and and look, I don't mind stupid movies, but you can't show me something that looks like Dark Knight with his Zack Snyder action set pieces and visual effects and then show me something that looks like a slightly above average action flick with, you know, jokes and quips and that kind of stuff. Like, you can't do that to us, the audience. And I really dislike the fact that they showed you what they're going to fight against. I mean, I already knew as a comic book reader that Batman and Superman were obviously not going to be enemies permanently, that there's going to be something that's going to unite them, and it's probably going to be something related to, the, to Zod and to Lex Luthor. But they really had no business showing Doomsday. That was just a terrible, terrible idea. And I feel like as if they really wanted a trailer that was not going to be as big on the themes and it was going to be more about you know some of the action set pieces and more of promoting the fight aspect of the film more of the batman versus superman aspect i think this trailer is leaps and bounds better it is leaps and bounds better because it actually gives you like a whole minute of you know just batman fighting just letting you see how batman fights and what I see is what I like, and because it's like the Arkhamverse, and Arkhamverse Batman is fucking awesome in fight scenes. Like, even though the story progressively got worse and worse and worse until we got the piece of shit known as Arkham Knight, the fight scenes still remained spectacular. And even with this kind of fat Batman and uh, this kind of older Batman who's in his mid-40s, it still is too awesome for me to just completely blank out those two little facts in my head and just enjoy the spectacle of it. Like, this dude, he's punching people through walls. Like, he's throwing them into walls and breaking the walls. He, like, smashes a dude's head. He, like, jumps into the air and smashes a dude's head into a crate. It's just freaking amazing um the sound choice really does work uh for this trailer it, because it really is trying to f sell you on the batman versus superman aspect it's trying to really sell you on the fight itself not so much on the themes and that and the ideas like the comic-con and the first trailer are it's really is there to give you some glimpses of what the story is but also to really sell you on the fight to really you know hype it up as you know a fight movie and a lot of people kind of still don't like the fact that they're kind of that they've just decided to stupefy the movie's marketing to make it more centered on the fight itself instead of on the ideas behind the fights. Um, well, I, I understand what they mean, and I still kind of feel in that camp myself. But personally, the Comic Con trailer. You can't top that. Like, even if they try to emulate the Comic-Con trailer later on to make it more about the ideas and the themes behind, behind you know, why the fight is happening and that kind of stuff, I still don't think they would have been able to top it. And I think that would have detrimented the film as well because you'd just be getting, you know, subpar versions of the Comic-Con trailer over and over and over again. And so I understand why that they why they've probably decided to change gears and promote the film more based on the Batman versus Superman fight 
as a fight rather than on the themes and ideas around the fight. Um, but it's still kind of sad that they couldn't find a middle ground for that. Like, they couldn't... Because they did find a middle ground for that. Like, that was the Comic-Con trailer. They were able to find a really good middle ground, but it feels like they didn't feel competent, confident enough in themselves from the marketing perspective to do that again, so they felt the need to kind of dumb the movie down in the last two trailers. But I still say that this is a really damn good trailer. The Batman section is really damn good. Um, you know, the, the little tidbits we see of their battle is, is really, really great. Um, the ending where Superman with Superman's what the fuck face, which I'm using as the thumbnail and the main photo of this video is just really great. Like he, like, because throughout the whole trailer, we just see Superman throwing around Batman, like he's nothing. And then Batman blocks his punch and Superman's like, what the fuck is going on? It's great. It's really great. And the whole music, uh, behind the trailer works. It's very Iron Man-y. Uh, I'm going to say that straight up. It really does remind me of Iron Man. Um, but I feel like for the purposes of promoting the battle as a battle, I think it really works, the whole rock angle. Um, here in Gal Gadot, finally speak as Wonder Woman is pretty cool too. Uh, she sounds a lot better than I expected she would, and that gives me some hope that she'll probably be good. But as I've said numerous times before, Wonder Woman is not a character I particularly give one one hundredth of a fuck about so if, even if she's bad i still won't care so there that is um as always the film looks visually great the effects look good clark has sexy time with lois which is which which is a big plus for me because sex is kind of a big thing of superhero that like these guys have a lot of sex and that's kind of you know, one of the appealing parts about, you know, comic books, I guess, because these guys, you know, a lot of them are ladies' men, a lot of them do have sex, and there is kind of like this, you know, romantic angle to the whole thing, but Marvel's pretty much made everybody celibate, like, the only things these guys can do is kiss, like, like, the only thing resembling a sex scene in the MCU is maybe in Iron Man 1, and I, that, 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 that kind of barely counts because that's before the MCU even exists, you know, really exists. And so it is kind of nice to see the fact that that kind of angle of superhero comics is being presented here in the DC. Is it the extended universe? Yeah, it's the extended universe. Um, so yeah, I, I don't personally, I'm not completely 100% on board for them dumbing down the marketing in this film to get bigger appeal, but if they were going with the mentality of the Comic-Con trailer pretty much combined action and themes so well that we can't possibly top it, let's just sell people on the action and, you know, have the themes and ideas maybe surprise them in the film itself. If that's what they were going for, I can see the reasoning for it. I'm not 100% on board on with it, but I get it. I get why they would do that. I just wish that the third trailer didn't exist and this was the instead this was the final one instead of it like we just got a big you know gap with no batman v superman trailers and then boom this one comes out not quite as good as the comic con one but still keeping enough of the plot a mystery as well as showing you more awesome fight scenes and to sell you more on this version of batman i think it's fair to say that no one is doubting uh, this version of batman anymore both in and out of costume i'm personally 100 percent on board with it Jeremy Irons' little quip about Bruce being too old um, to die young anymore was really great. It, it really does sound like something Alfred would say. And overall, I am back on board with this movie. Not as much as I was with the Comic-Con trailer. And I still think that, that Civil War, a movie that I'm really turning around on when it comes to you know, my opinion on I was really negative and kind of even indifferent on it. But as I've heard and seen more new things, I think that Civil War is ultimately going to be a better quality film than Batman v Superman, but considering the fact that I was compl that I completely did not give one I iota of a fuck about this movie, you know, before this trailer finally dropped, I'd say that it did effectively sell me back on the film and get me on board with it. So yeah, I'm excited for Batman v Superman again. Um, not as much as I was after the Comic Con trailer, obviously, but I still think that for those of you who were kind of really spurned by the third trailer being really mediocre, I think this was exactly what the film needed to get you back on board without spoiling any more things.